Welcome back. She's a lawyer and civil rights activist who to date is perhaps the most vocal and fiery female legislator in the August House. Suba North Member of Parliament Millie Odiambo has never shied away from speaking her mind and is equally outspoken outside Parliament. Her ability to tackle anybody is not only feared but also revered. Away from politics, the popular politician is a staunch Christian who, when not politicking, quietly devotes her time to family. On Newsmakers Tonight, we feature Amilo Gezageza, a.k.a. Mrembo Wasuba. Purchase your tracks today. She was at least 13 years old when she first entertained the thought that perhaps someday she could vie for the bitter parliamentary seat. Her father, Harrison Odiambo, had political ambitions. My father was uh, vying for Mbita parliamentary seat when he died in a boating accident. So after that I thought maybe I want to be the MP for Mbita like my dad. But then um, because I grew up in a very... A strong Christian family. My mother was very strong Christian. So she kind of, uh, not she, but really I thought then that you can't be uh, a Christian and be in politics. She's a chip off the old block. As years later, she has realized her father's dream by becoming member of parliament Mbita constituency. She remembers a childhood that instilled in her strong values. I thank God because my mother was educated. And uh, in the old education systems, they, they were kind of all-rounded. She was a nurse, she was a social worker. But through all her training, she also learned a lot of uh, home science. So what she did is she, she learned to be very innovative. Like when she was not able to buy us drinks, uh, she told us and made us feel like everybody else, that she told us, oh, the others, their parents can buy them sodas and juices, but your mother, tell them your mother can make juice. So what she would do is uh, <laughs> she would boil water and put, uh, you know, color water essentially and sugar. And we'd go boasting to the others and we said, oh, you know, my mother knows how to make juice. <laughs> and she knows how to make soda. We just didn't know. <laughs> there was a story behind her not being able to make so, uh, to buy juice. Her mother's compassion for the less fortunate rubbed off on her as she would later become a vocal civil rights activist and lawyer. Uh, I was one of the brighter students in my law class. So everybody was telling me, oh, as a bright student, you can go to these really big law firms uh, where you'll get a lot of money doing corporate law but my heart was not in corporate law and they told me oh you don't want to get rich I wanted to help people I wanted to use law to help people it was while serving as a delegate at the BOMAS of Kenya during the constitution drafting process that ODM nominated her to parliament she would later clinch the bitter parliamentary seat in 2013 and is the incumbent MP Suba North well the journey is both exciting and challenging it's exciting because one of the greatest things I love doing is changing uh, people's lives. And the fact that I'm also able to influence policy and legislation, to influence resources that goes into you know, changing lives. And then one of the most exciting things for me is also just working with women. That I find so, you know, it's just so refreshing for me. I love working with women. I love working with the other categories, but much, much more with women. The vocal legislator speaks of the laws in an august house that is dominated by male legislators. In the 11th parliament there was mayhem in parliament during the passing of the controversial security laws amendment bill. Millie was among those who fervently opposed the laws and this led to a confrontation with male colleagues. Well one of the challenges that you face as a woman politician is that people will always want to attack you below the belt. Uh, the men will not want to have fair competition. So first they will either try, you know, a physical attack on you, but mainly it's, it will be a sexual attack. And once they attack you, they turn it around and make it look like you are the one with the problem. Like in that incident in Parliament, 
three male members actually two of them were pulling up my dress as I pull it down they are pulling it up and then a third was pulling uh, back my uh, pulling uh, my panty and then when we came out the all they were doing was uh, saying oh how she merely removed her panty and threw it at at others what i refuse for myself to do is i don't let people dictate uh, for me my narrative and so when i came out i stated my narrative i don't care whether they corrupt it but i will state my narrative and my narrative is never an apologetic narrative if you tell me that i undress i told i'll tell you and address 10 times so what but for the people who undress me i will follow the legal process that i need to and in this case because of the the, the law and privileges i did a complaint to the speaker of the national assembly unfortunately no action was taken she opens up on being mocked for being childless so low was this blow that her political opponents used it to discredit her during previous political campaigns it was from a very personal place that she then brought before the house the assisted reproductive technology bill 2016 that seeks to help persons unable to give birth through natural ways i got married at 38 and uh, Thirty-eight is not an easy time to get, you know, a child easily. But also, um, my husband is not Kenyan, so we are not staying together. And then I was fairly very busy. So because of that, even if you have no problems, it, it will be difficult. But then I also had fibroids. And fibroids ordinarily would make it very difficult for you. So until I had them surgically removed, that was a very difficult challenge. I was actually shocked when I was campaigning. And uh, then people started uh, calling me Lor, which means a barren woman. And they said, we cannot elect, elect this one because she's barren. And uh, even though it worked against them, because people are saying, you know, those are not things you, you use against people. Uh, but for me then, I said, yeah, it's good that you've raised it, so let me deal with it, so that all the women who are barren or considered barren, we can help them to get babies easily. But I always tell women that despite the assisted reproduction bill is to help you get a child, but you are still important with or without a child because having a child is not what defines you. Neither does not having a child define who you are. Milio Diambo has been a very strong party member of ODM and a loyal supporter of Raila Odinga. So what are her thoughts on the handshake between the opposition leader and President Uhuru Kenyatta? I know a lot of people have raised this concern that because now you are opposition and you are, you are quiet, we are holding the government accountable. For me, so long as we stay on course in terms of issues that are of concern to the country, you know, good governance, you know, human rights, uh, ensuring the economy is uh, doing well, then really what, what are you holding the government accountable if we are able to do that? And for me, I, what I was concerned about was seeing goodwill in doing all this. And at some point I was a little concerned because I wasn't seeing that. And uh, right now what I'm seeing is I'm say, kind of uh, uh, awakening up uh, by the government. Many people may not be able to see it. And um, yeah, uh, let's, let's see, let's, let's give it a bit of time and see whether the government is on course. But if it is not on course, uh, I will be the first person to, to raise the red flag. Lately, the fiery legislator has been quiet. I ask her why. Well, this is a time for peace. And uh, there's no reason why we just want to put Kenyans on, on edge all the time. There's a time that we need to uh, let Kenyans rest from politics. At home, Millie is surrounded by children. Uh, one of the things I take very seriously is family. What my mother taught me is a, pa a family uh, that prays together stays together. So we always pray together as a family. After we come together, I mean, after I come back from my, my, my busy schedule, uh, we'll sit together, we will uh, eat together, and then we will pray together. She is maternal and loves having her nieces and nephews around her. Her Zimbabwean husband, Magugu Mabona, frequents Nairobi to spend time with his wife. Sometimes you win people's, uh, strong people's heart with the gentlest and uh, simplest of things. 
uh, when I saw him, he was carrying a Bible. That for me is uh, greater than anything. Yeah, I know it's not the most romantic of things, <laughs> but for me, the fact that he's, he was good looking, and I'm like, what you know you are not able you are not likely to see a good looking man carrying a bible and being a christian i was like wow good looking bible that's amazing away from politics her fitness regime includes hula hooping and dance <laughs> I ask her what most people don't know about her. So I speak Spanish. Oh, como estas? Muy bien. Uh, me llamo Mili, de Kenya. Hablo español, pero un poquito. Si. Sí. <laughs> I just told you, uh, my name is Mili. I'm from Kenya. I speak a little Spanish. Politically, Mili Odiambo spares no punches and is no pushover. But away from the public gallery is a woman of unwavering faith in God and devotion to family who is passionate and committed to social justice. Each day what he